Hello. <laughs> Listen, I don't know how to do this Instagram thing. You know, I'm never on Instagram. <laughs> Not doing live. I'm sorry. I would have I would have talked you through it more. I had a rough day with this food poison, but I just wanted to be here today because I was so excited about talking with you. Oh, MG, food poisoning? Yes. Man, something must be going on in the in the world because you know I got a broken wrist. You got food poisoning. I don't know what's happening, but we are here. That's what I was about to say, sister. We are here. We are here, so let's get it popping. You go ahead, and I, I'm 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 with you. I'm following your flow. Okay, yes. So, Dr. Shauna, this is going to be a, a great episode. So, what I like to do is give you your flowers first and just tell you why I love you, sister. Um, I really like what you're doing. You know, you don't really see that many couple therapists. And, you know, it really interested me what you were talking about on your page. And so, I was like, I got to have this lady on. You're always saying some great, interesting things. So just thank you so much for, you know, spreading this um, information about how to be in a healthy relationship. You know, I really think that's cool. So thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Look, I want you to I want you to give everybody a little introduction about you and what you actually do, because you can tell it better than I can ever tell it. Well, that's a lot. So. There's, you know how I say we all wear multiple masks. We all have different roles, right? So there are multiple positions that I have in what I do. In my profession, I am a doctor of social work. I am a licensed clinical social work. And to put that in layman's term, I specialize in relationships. I'm a relationship expert. I do couples therapy. I do marriage counseling. That is what I do. That's what brings in my consistent bread and butter. That's what I do because I've been called to do it, not because I want to do it. Because it was wow. up to me, some crazy people that come through my office, I would rather not do it. <laughs> however, however, I'm like, good Lord. Good Lord. You, you send me here. I got to deal with this. I got to work it because I want to see people win. No matter what their choices are, no matter what their options are, whatever they decide to do, I want to see people win. So that's what I do in my profession. Right. And then I am also affiliated with different activists in a community in different states across the United States. And we all travel and we do different things on the Black Agenda Tour. Right. right. And my role on the Black Agenda Tour is just the relationship arena. Right. So I don't try to step in anyone else's lane. And when I walk, go on a Black Agenda Tour, not only am I teaching the, the black woman, how to mm -hmm. understand and love the black man. But I'm also teaching the black man how to understand and love the black woman. Now, remember, I only have one perspective because it's my perspective. So I'm just going by what I work with and what I know from research and what I know that I see that comes into the offices and how I can help them to get better in certain areas. Areas like pl financial planning, areas like com chemistry, communication, compatibility, areas like finances and as a whole, area when it comes to parenting, dealing with in-laws, siblings, children from other parents. And even if you decide to leave your relationship. Now, I don't, I don't deal with divorce per se, but I'm not opposed to divorce because sometimes people like to wear masks and they stay in situations that are toxic. Because yeah. they are afraid of being judged. They are afraid of being criticized, whatever the case is. So if you decide to go, I'm going to support you through it and make sure that you guys have an understanding of how that must look like for the children and each other. Damn. You can leave, but it's how you leave that makes the difference. Right? So yeah. even on the Black Agenda Tour, that's all I'm, I'm dealing with. And then... When it comes to doctoral level students at Rutgers University, mm -hmm. I am a guest educator, a guest professor, and I come in and again, I teach on my thesis, which is on my, my dissertation, which is saving black marriages, right? It's taking an Afrocentric approach to healing the black community. So what I do is I teach on different aspects that even though we all experience, everyone's marriage experience the same thing. I don't care what race you are. Everyone's marriages experience the same thing, but culture right? Historical mm -hmm. trauma and life's tra traumas makes our individual experiences unique. So even though I say like, if you're dealing with infidelity, whether you're white, black, Asian, you're dealing with infidelity. But when you think about culture in the mix of infidelity, that's what's going to make the experience unique. So I go to educate other clinicians and other 
doctoral level students on how to work with their clients and their patients through this process. Does that wow. make sense? Yeah. So okay. that's just some of it. I mean, I got a lot of other stuff, but that's, wow. that's the most, the main parts that I do. And then I speak um, with different organizations where people have to go to up, renew their license every year. So they need credits to renew their license. And I go and I present on, again, areas surrounding ethics as it concerns to marriage counseling, ethics as it concerns to building families, therapy, relationship therapy, all that stuff is what I teach on. Well, that's awesome. Uh, that's why I wanted to have you on, Dr. Shauna, because I know a lot of people go through a lot of things, and I wanted to bring you on specifically for that. So let's jump right into it, and we have an hour show, so it's a, it's a lot I want to cover, so I want to try to hit on a lot of points. So I thought a good place to start, a doctor, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, is the three C's. Oh, the three C's. Yes, the three C's of relationship. Chemistry, yes. connection, and compatibility. Yes. So you, what do you want to know? Let's start off with them. Let's go with compatibility. Does it matter? How important is it? Well, how about we start off in, can we start off in the order in which I think people, it might be, it might be um, beneficial for people to hear it. And, sure. and why the three C's matter. Is that okay? You you the doctor. I'm just here to just... I, I'm Shauna. Today, you my sister. We're my friend. You know, I, I'm Shauna. I'm Shauna. Okay, Shauna. Okay, so let me, let me say this. The three C's primarily, mm -hmm. not, not always, but primarily, it, it applies to people who are looking to enter into a relationship. People who are single who are looking to date, people who are currently dating, we're not talking about already have committed to a relationship. Even mm -hmm. though even though you can still benefit from it, especially if you're not tied into marriage, you can still benefit from it. But it, these are for the people who, who wants to stop making the same mistakes over and over again, where they get caught up in these relationships, they stay in these relationships too long, not considering the three C's, but because mm. it's feel good or the person looks good or they got good money or they drive a nice car for all the wrong reasons why they're getting in relationships, right? So I, I try to teach people to understand the three C's and how you can apply it so that you don't waste your time with somebody you're going to break up with anyway. I like that. I like that. Makes plan. sense? Yes. Okay, good. So let's start with chemistry. Okay. My favorite. Your favorite. It's my favorite, too, because chemistry is that kind of thing where it gets us. <laughs> Make it you gets do us like right this. At, yeah, baby. It gets us right at the core, at the very beginning. And so it's important for us to really think about chemistry because that's what's going to attract you to a person. Would yes. you agree? Of course. Right? It's, it's the thing that, like I said, there are multiple different ways of, of being attracted to somebody through chemistry. We all know sexual chemistry, right? When you walk yes. in... And you don't know why, but you are just in that kind of situation where you meet somebody, you might just drop your drawers and you don't know why. There's a lot of people that get caught up in sexual chemistry. You got to have strong willpower if it's the sexual chemistry that's attracting you to the person. And what I mean by that, there are some girls, and there's no judgment. We're no judgment here. No, no, We're just no having judgment. a regular conversation. Yeah. But there are some, some women, you know, I mean, got. We're talking to the ladies today, right? Speak, on it. Like, huh? Speak on it. Speak on it. Speak on it. We're talking to the ladies today. Because some, some guys, have, some ladies are like, well, guys do that too. Let, let, come on, ladies. We're talking to you today. We know guys do it too, but we're talking to you today. We're talking to you today, right? So there's some ladies where that sexual chemistry gets to them. And they're like, they want to go on a date. They're excited. They call their girlfriend. They talk about how excited they are. They trying to be strong. Date number two, he already in the drawers. Yes. Am I wrong? That happened to some of my friends. <laughs> right? right? Yes. Date number two, he's, he's already in the drawers. One week later, she think they're getting married. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, a week later, <laughs> she trying to plan a wedding and a baby. A week later, and I'm being facetious, but... We have to understand what is at play here, what is happening here. And when you have that kind of attraction to somebody, you have to have even more willpower because you haven't given yourself an opportunity 
to assess the other two C's. Is that always lust? When you, I guess that's, that's always lust when you're feeling that. Some people say when they feel that sometimes it's love, but would you always say that's lust if you feel such a strong connection? Because I've, I've met certain people where I feel such a strong connection with them. It's almost animalistic. It's like, whoa, you know, what well, is that? Well, connection is different than chemistry. And that's okay. where we keep getting it confused. Okay. Because we think we have a connection to somebody. And we're like, oh, I love them. Connection can bring up love. But what you might be feeling is chemistry. Mm. And so many people put too much emphasis on chemistry. It's important, but it's only worth 20% in your assessment. 20% in your evaluation. People put too much stake in chemistry. You can have intellectual chemistry with somebody. Mm. Right? You can have an yeah. intellectual chemistry where it's just the way y'all just flow. Like y'all just, y'all just got it there. Chemistry is not always sexual. You get what I'm saying? Then you got people who they say, oh, that's my twin flame. That's my soulmate. Well, how do you know? <laughs> exactly. How do you know? That's chemistry. Right? Yeah, I, yeah, people do definitely get hung up on chemistry. I'm even feeling like I have before. Definitely. I know I have. I have before, too. And there's nothing wrong with that because Chemistry is needed in a relationship. Just because I want you to account it for 20%, it doesn't mean it's not necessary. Because chemistry is what keeps our sexual attraction alive. Yes. Throughout the relationship. So let me put it to you this way. Have you ever been in a relationship where you know the person ain't good for you, right? Oh Y'all don't God. break up. You know what I mean, right? You break it's up. Toxic. Toxic. You break up. A year later, two years later, 10 years later, you run into them and it's like, boom, the attraction is there all over again. Yes. Have you experienced that? I know some of y'all listening. I know you guys have experienced that. Somebody raising their hand because it's true. Everybody. Most people That's have. what chemistry feels like. Mm. And it breaks my heart where I, I meet women and that's the only thing they're relying on is the yeah. chemistry that they have with the person and they're mistaking it for love. Wow. Right? Yes. Because it's such a strong feeling. I think people let it knock, it, knock them off their feet. Yeah. Yeah. It's you know, a they, lose their, they, they lose those other senses to stay down and stay level-headed. Absolutely. taken off. Absolutely. They, they lose the other senses to stay level-headed. And they depend on that entirely too much because that's such a strong emotional bond or emotion, not even a bond, is a strong emotional attraction yes. to somebody. It, convince, it can convince you that it's love. Mm, that's powerful. Right? Yes. You ready for the second C? Hit, me, hit us with it. All right. The second C is connection. Yes. That's where your bonding is. That's where your bonding is. That's where your emotional connection is. That's where your love is. That's where your friendship is. That's where your vulnerability is. That's where your trust is. That's where your intimacy is. And intimacy is more than sex. Yes. Right? Yes. That's is. that that's that person that makes you want to stay up all night on the phone until you fall asleep. All right, you hang up. No, you hang up. Like high schoolers, right? Right. I love that feeling. But that's that person. That's that person that you want to talk to to tell everything to, no matter what. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm right there with you. Right? That's right that person you. where you just want to check in and be like, babe, how was your day going? And y'all just have a flowing conversation about anything. It's no like y'all been friends for years. Yes. Yeah, right? That's yeah. the thing that keeps you friends for years. But here's the thing. There's so many people who don't have connection. They're mm -hmm. in relationships that they're not even friends with their partner. That's, and that's when it becomes toxic. That's I mean, when it becomes toxic. And they hold on because that chemistry is there. That sex is real good. 
Yeah, we all know somebody like that, I guess, you know. <laughs> we see that on TV, portrayed in TV a lot. <laughs> Forget TV. We we know that in real life. True. Okay. And yeah, many true. of us have been in situations where the sex was really good, but it's so many other stuff that you're like, good Lord, we can't even talk to each other while arguing. But we can get in an argument and they'd be like, baby, I love you. I love you too. And next thing you know, you're all fours. I mean, come on. Argument not even resolved. You still yeah. feel hurt, but you couldn't say no. Chemistry is dangerous, baby. Oh my God. It's like playing with fire. But I also want to emphasize that connection is so very important in a relationship. That kind of love, that kind of friendship, that kind of bond mm -hmm. that you need with that person, that kind of emotional availability, that kind of emotional sensitivity that you need with the person where you can be vulnerable, where you can be naked, they can see you in your truth and still love you through it. When you look at your body and you say, God damn it, these kids did my body and I got stretch marks, you know, I got dimples in my ass, these breastfed titties don't hang, they don't, they don't sit up right, they hanging low. And no matter what, that person doesn't see it. Mm. Because you are their best friend. Oh, I love that. Because they care about you so much that they want to see you win. They want to see us win. Right? That's yes. that partner that tells you, stop saying me. There's no me, it's we. It's us. Because your pain is his pain. And his mm. pain is your pain. But do you know how many people don't have that friendship? Yes. And they're married to people like that? They can't stand? That sounds so sad. <laughs> the friendship is so important. You got to build that first. But I guess when you rush into relationships and you're just going off of lust, you know, that's when you find yourself in that toxic situation. Then, it's, then you battle and trying to get out of it. But here's the thing, um, Kira. It's Kira, right? Kara. Kara. Here's the thing. Some people don't know how to be a friend. So they don't even know if they're in a relationship that's not with someone who's not even being a friend to them. Oh, my God. You just said a mouthful of that. Right? Yeah. Some people don't even know how to be a friend. So how do they know what to expect from a friend? Mm. Some people watch their parents be toxic to each other. So they have been conditioned and programmed to be toxic in their own relationships. Yes, you're so right. Even in that friendship, even in that relationship where you guys can trust each other, you're vulnerable, mm -hmm. y'all could be besties for life, BFF for life. That's still only 30%. So chemistry is 20%. Connection is 30%. That equals what? Don't ask me to do math. <laughs> Come on now. Three plus two is 50%. 50%. <laughs> yes. So then we're talking about compatibility. That is the other 50%. And this is the area that people ignore. This is the area where you have to see if you are on the same page from 21 Jump Street. You remember that show? Are you too young for that show, 21 Jump Street? I Sorry. I remember. <laughs> My friend's mama used to say that. Don't act like you know me from 21 Jump Street. <laughs> but, so how are we supposed to, like, okay, well, that's chemistry, but I'm, I'm like, you thinking it's a connection. I just feel like chemistry and connection can kind of be confused sometimes. People like to confuse it, but it's very clear. Because let me, let, me, let me make it to you like this. Have you, before we get on to, to compatibility, let's go back to chemistry and connection because I don't want you to be confused, Carol. Okay. Have you ever been, and maybe not you, maybe somebody you know of, have you ever been in a relationship with someone who you love the friendship, but you just don't have the sexual drive? Mm, well, they will have to answer that because I I don't know I have <laughs> I haven't experienced that. <laughs> It'll be more I don't right. like the friendship, <laughs> right? But what I'm saying to you is, as a counselor, mm -hmm. I have counseled plenty of couples that they're best of friends, but their sex life is dry mm. for whatever reason. 
right? Yes. And I when I get to, do it. huh? I said I wouldn't be able to do it. You won't be able to do it, but there are a lot of people are, that are in sexless relationships. You can go ahead to YouTube and put in sexless relationships, and you'll see tons of videos come up about sexless relationships. Oh, yeah, I've heard about it, but what's the point then? Because people are relying on the connection and maybe even compatibility, and they think that sex is not that important. And it's one person who is deprived. There's one person that's starving. They're mm -hmm. not feeling happy because they need it. And the other person is like, eh, it's not that important to me. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, I've heard so that. So you get in a relationship where there was no chemistry. Just because y'all was hitting it off at the beginning doesn't mean you have, you have chemistry. Because chemistry doesn't die. I told you, you could have a bad breakup with somebody, run into them five years later, and still got the same chemistry. Still want to jump their bones. So true. So just so we can have time to cover everything else, let's jump into what's the next one? Compatibility? Compatibility. Okay, compatibility. Now, compatibility accounts for 50%. Okay. And this is the area that so many people ignore because they make excuses or they mm -hmm. try to compromise. Compatibility is like, so say, for example, Kara, you are somebody who is outgoing. You like to go out, you know, you're mm -hmm. a little external or what's that called? The extrovert? You're a little social butterfly. And you get in a relationship with somebody who doesn't like to go out, somebody who's mm -hmm. a homebody, somebody that don't visit with their family, but family is your everything. You come from a big family. Y'all all love each other. Y'all all help each other out. And this person just feels like they don't need family around. Mm -hmm. Incompatible. But what we tend to do is to make excuses for that. Well, I love him. I mean, we get along really, really good. It's my best friend. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're married but single because you're hanging out with all your friends and your man home because he's boring. It's incompatible. Mm. Somebody married raised but single. Married huh? but single. What do you mean by married but single? Oh, you never heard that term before? Maybe, but I want you to just, yeah, tell me, what, what does that mean? Exactly? I'm going to tell you what married but single is. There are a lot of married people who they have separate lives from each other. They mm -hmm. don't do anything together. Somebody says, that was me. They don't do anything together. They don't share friendships together. They can barely stand being together in public. They're just, they have two separate lives. And I tell these kind of people, you do marriage really well, but your relationship sucks. Marriage wealth is making sure the house bills are paid, making sure the children have what they need, right? Mm -hmm. If you need extra money, I'm going to give you extra money. If your car breaks down, I'm going to fix your car. If your mama needs to get picked up from the airport, I'm going to pick up your mama from the airport. They do marriage really well, the partnership. They do it well, but they're not even friends. They don't have sex with each other. They don't like each other. I think they're some not people just, they just stay in because they've been together for so long. Different reasons. Some people stay in because of finances. Some people stay in because they, they, they count the time that they invest in a relationship. I got 20 years in. Yeah, 20 unhappy years, good for you. <laughs> I'd rather not. I'd rather not, too. It's all about being happy. Like, I don't, I don't, well, I do understand why people get to that point. I think sometimes people think it's going to change. Do people keep hope? Do you experience that most people feel like they, they want to see if they can make it better? I think people are not being honest about compatibility. I think people, some, some people, not all, I think some people are afraid of being alone. I yeah. think some people, they look at the time that they invested in the relationship so they don't want to start over. Mm. They rather deal with disrespect. They rather deal with unhappiness. They rather deal with emotional unavailability, emotional um, abuse. They rather deal with, they rather deal with a lot of stuff than to be lonely. So, it, I mean, we know all relationships, you're going to have your highs and your lows and your arguments, and their arguments are normal. But at what point do you know to throw in the towel that you gave it your all and without saying that you gave up too easily? Everybody is different, right? So mm -hmm. I can't tell somebody when to throw into the, in the towel. But if people sit down and they really think about what the compatibility looks like, what mm -hmm. do I want in life? Right. If I want, if I don't want to have children, but you want to have children, we're not compatible. 
But because I'm afraid of losing you, I compromise on something I know I don't want. Mm. And now I feel neglected. Now I feel alone. Now I feel stressed out because I never wanted children to begin with. So now I'm not showing up 100 in a relationship because I wasn't honest with myself. Right? That's, that's a lot. Or some, some people are just so far off mm -hmm. financially from each other or educationally from each other, but they don't want to be alone. So they know that they're making concessions. They're being with somebody that is not even on their level. Yeah, I think because they don't want to be alone. Right. And, you know, that's why people should just really get to know their selves first. Like, I don't know, it seems like sometimes it's the people who don't take time out to get to know themselves that's always the ones in relationships. At least that's what I noticed. I mean, I'm just saying something random there. Say that again? I, it seems like a lot of people that I see, like, they won't take the time to really get to know themselves, but they're the ones who are, like, in monkey bar relationships. Like, they have to be in a relationship, I think. I see are people who don't really take the time to really get to know who they are as a person. Well, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I see you know? where you're coming from and I'm not saying it is wrong. I'm saying I don't necessarily agree with that mm -hmm. because just because I see somebody in multiple relationships doesn't mean that they don't know themselves. There's some people who much rather be leave your relationship than to stay with it because they do know themselves and you don't know yourself. Mm. Well, like so me, if I'm dating somebody, I take I take time to myself. And I mean, I know I'm different than a lot of people, but it seems like a, a lot of it just seems like more most people in society they're out of one relationship and they write back in another. And I'm like, okay, I thought like I read self help books growing up, and I'm thinking to myself, I was told you know you're supposed to spend time with yourself, work, do self inventory. And when I'm looking at everybody else in society, it just seems like everybody's just Gotta have a relationship. Gotta have, a, and I'm like, at what point are people really taking the time to get to know them? Am I wrong, or are you gonna just say, well, everybody's different? Because I'm thinking to myself, how can these people truly be healthy if they don't even have hobbies or or anything? I don't get it. So okay, I'm so like, let me let me propose a question to you because what I try not to do, and and I'm not saying you're doing this. I'm saying me as an individual. Mm -hmm. I try not to judge other people in their relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Because behind closed doors, you don't know what it is. So let's just say Kara takes the time to know herself. And she right. spent all these years getting to know herself. Now she's ready to get in a relationship. Now she meets somebody who's presenting one way. And this person is just not a healthy person. And you don't see it right away. Mm -hmm. You don't see it right away. This person says, yeah, it's okay, yeah, I like that. Oh, yeah, we could do that. And then all of a sudden, four or five years go by, and now this person switch on you. Does it mean you didn't know yourself because you left the relationship? No, but my thing is, what's the point of me taking the time to get to know myself when, when nobody else is doing it? I mean, no, it's helping me, but I don't know. That frustrates me because I'm like, but, I'm doing but you it see how supposedly. You're because I'm doing it supposedly the right way, Dr. Shauna, and I'm the one who's been single. I'm just being real with y'all. But you're one person. You're 50% of the relationship. You cannot control another person. Yeah, but all these people who are mucked up are together. Where are the people who are taking time out to know themselves like I'm knowing myself? But it doesn't mean that these people are not taking time out to know themselves. Do I mean, I they talk just to people. Be, they I could be... They, Go you got to understand, Kira, we come into relationship with a lot of belief systems that we've been told from other people. Mm. You just said, i am taking the time to know myself. I'm reading self-help books. You, you taking somebody else's advice and opinion. No. And I'm not saying it's wrong. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm reading things and I'm taking it just like you read any book. You don't take every book as fact. You reading it to gain knowledge, and then you assess what you're gonna take from it, what you're not gonna take from it. But and and to spend time thinking, I think would be better than just me going from relationship to relationship. At least I'm sitting here saying, well, how can I better myself? Oh, how can I be better than my last relationship? And and everyone does that. And what I'm saying to you is, you don't know who you're gonna meet on the other end. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You can you can. 
take all the time in the world to know yourself, but you don't get to control how another person evaluates themselves. They can present well. And well, they yeah, exactly. People. They mucked up. <laughs> but, but they may not think. They may not think that anything is wrong with them. They may think that they right. know themselves. And when you are in relationship with each other, we should always be evolving. We should always be learning something new about ourselves that we didn't even know. Because you never know how you are going to engage with another personality. True. You get what I'm saying? Yes. I get right? what you're so saying. People and come with their, their backgrounds. They have their, their culture. They have religion. They have um, traditions. They have experiences. Everyone comes to the table with something different. So you could be around somebody who knows who they are. You can know who you're, you are, but when the two energies come together, they're just not compatible. Well, that's so true. Attachments, you know, uh, you know, when you, a lot of those talks in relationships, you leave with an attachment and it takes a lot to shake it off. At least I've been there before. So, I don't know. You saw I got a little spicy with that. And when I use the word muck, just to let y'all know folks who aren't as country as me, uh, <laughs> Muck is a word you use when you get frustrated. So, um, Doctor, uh, I mean Shauna, I'm sorry. I want to go. You call over... me Doctor Shauna. I would just say like today we girlfriends today, right? Yes. Even if I call you Doctor, we still girlfriends. We still so, girlfriends. Yes. I want to go over some of the good people we should get to know and some of the people we should avoid. Like a lot of people have a lot of issues with narcissists, and you know I felt like I've dated one before, but. I felt like I've known people who are narcissists. So, I don't know. Let's, let's, can we talk about it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's important for us to know that narcissism is a personality disorder. Right? Mm -hmm. And th it's great that you and I were just having this conversation just two seconds ago because a narcissist will present like somebody who knows themselves. Oh, here you go. Look, look, I thought we were supposed to be girlfriend. You coming, you coming at me. We don't have a far No. Here. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about a narcissist, <laughs> period. Oh, they know man. a lot of people. No, I'm not talking about you. Don't no, internalize it. This is not personal. No, not no, so okay. I was married to a narcissist. So it's it's not personal whatsoever. Okay. I'm saying, a nar huh? No, I said, okay. Yeah, no, I'm just talking about narcissism, period. They will present like they know themselves. They have a lot of connections. They're the most important thing in the world. They go around, they help people, they're always good, they're calm, cool, and collected. Meanwhile, they they study you to know all your weaknesses that you don't even know that you have. They will study you to know your, your weaknesses and they will play on it. And you won't even know that it is happening to you. They do a lot of gaslighting as well. Yeah. A lot of gaslighting. And they will say to you, you'll be like, oh, well, baby, I just felt when you did X, Y, and Z, I just felt like. I wasn't hurt. You didn't care about my feelings. They're like, well, tell me what you need me to do. All right. And that won't happen. That's it. I'm, I'm with it. We're a team. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then they'll present like they're changing all the things you've done told them that you don't like. And then next thing you know, when you start to calm down and everything is back to where it is, they'll start doing it again. They get a thrill off of it. You have another conversation about it, and it turns to another argument. They'll apologize. I'm doing my best. Be patient with me. I love you. I got you. Right? That's why somebody said blame avoidance as a that and accountability avoidance as well. I'm working on myself. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We're in a relationship. This is what we do to build. Looks like it's all good. Turn around, boom, do the same thing all over again. But blame you. Sean, I heard these people can't be fixed. What's your opinion on that? They can't be what? I heard they can't be healed. Like they can't be changed. It's a personality gonna... disorder. So how how do we? So we're not able to love them, or I mean, we can love them, but I mean, do they? I mean, I, that's my problem with on because I studied narcissism myself to understand. I'm like, well, what do you do with them? Do they not? I mean, should they not be able to love people? I mean, like, what's the I get that it's a personality disorder, but what do we do with that? Everyone is different. Everyone else has different reasons why they get in relationships, and everyone else has different tolerance levels, right? 
Everyone okay. else can deal with toxic. I mean, some people can deal with toxicity way more than another person would do or are mm -hmm. able to deal with, right? It also depends on the kind of relationship or situation you have with the narcissist. Some narcissists just want you around. They like the, the, the image. Yes. Right? So you're doing yourself, you're doing your thing, you have your life, they have their life, and then when they want you around, they invite you into their lives. And some women who might be with this person that could be very successful, she getting everything she want out of it and what she need out of it. So she may not need him to be in her presence all the time. So she may not realize that there's narcissism going on there. Uh, are, are they able to understand that they are narcissists? Like, can we show no. them that they are? Okay, no. somebody was asking that question. No. No. A lot of them would never know because they don't look at themselves as having a disorder. Remember, with most narcissists, you have the problem, not them. Well, cool. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that, yeah. You are the sick one, not them. You are the psychotic person. You are the one that needs to work on yourself. Wow. And somebody said, can they be violent? They can be violent as well, but everyone is different. It depends on that person's temperament. A lot of them are provocateurs. They'll provoke you to aggression so they can blame you and make it seem like you're the crazy one. Oh, my God. Been there, done that. Wore that T-shirt. Don't want to wear it anymore. Right? Yeah. And, and trust me, narcissists, they will find the people who have the strong personalities, the people who are loving, kind, caring, who know who they are, know themselves, and they will break your ass down all the way to a team. Oh, yes. So uh, can we, if you feel comfortable, can we talk about some more personality traits? Like what about... Uh, alpha woman, alpha male. Okay, so I think that, I think a lot of people throw around the term alpha woman or alpha female, alpha males, and they really don't even understand what it is, right? And, and we got to understand that alphas are different. No, no two alphas are the same. And mm. alphas have different levels to it because they require different things out of life, right? So yeah. if we talked about the alpha male, a lot of women have the images in their mind that an alpha male is somebody who is very masculine, very strong, the rah-rah in your face, I'll check anybody, anyone. Not all alpha males look like that. Mm. Right? Okay, okay. A, a, healthy, a healthy alpha male is someone who leads and understands that his partner is his equal and their vision is the same. Wow. Okay. If you're with somebody who's trying to control you because they're the man, rah, rah, beat your chest, that's not an alpha male. Okay. Thanks for making that clear. Okay. Right? I think, yes. Because the alpha male is about leadership. And there's no, no leader can have a movement on their own. So how would you, so is it high as an alpha, alpha female or does it, does it differ? Gender by gender? The I think alpha female and alpha male, they have, they have um, differences. Absolutely. Somebody, somebody saying no real man going to agree with that about being a alpha male. To agree with what? Be specific about the point. There was a lot of points made. Right. Because I want to know what that person is talking about, too. Right. Um, and like I said in one of my videos, if you, was, if you watched the video, I don't know if you did. But I broke down different types, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I likened it to like a lion. I likened it to a great wolf. And I likened it to a hyena, right? And mm -hmm. so the different levels, I, and there's a, there's a whole bunch of different types of alpha males. But if I just stay with those three for a minute, right? If you think about it, a, a lion looks ferocious. They're the king of the jungle, right? They have this air about themselves. But if you really study a lion and a lioness, a lioness rules, right? Yeah. Lion yeah. eat because of the female getting the meal, getting the meal, the food. Mm -hmm. And when the lion comes along, the lioness backs off. She catches the food. But because of who he is, he gets that esteem. Wow. Right? 
That's a a hyena. Way to look at it. A hyena, most people believe, when they see a hyena, they believe it's a pack of males. But did you know the female hyena rules that pack? Wow. But the man automatically gets the prestige. And if you study hyena in the house, he eats last. Mm. But in the public, he gets the image. But guess what? The great wolf, and you don't have to believe me, go look at these things. The great wolf, Mm -hmm. The great wolf must have an alpha female. And it's the great wolf and the alpha female that moves together and everybody is ranked under. The children are ranked under. Mm -hmm. The grandparents are ranked under. And they protect the whole entire pack. And they do nothing without each other. So you have, okay, so what about the omega male? <laughs> So an omega male, we have to understand what the omega is. The omega male is even lower than a beta male. Okay. The omega male, see, the beta male is second in command. The alpha male is first. The beta male mm -hmm. is second in command. An omega male has no status whatsoever. The omega male desires to be an alpha male, but gets no respect whatsoever. Yeah, the, the beta males are the second beta. in command. Okay. Right? So they, they have power, but not in the presence of an alpha male. It doesn't mean they don't have power, but the alpha male takes all of the power. And the beta male is his secondhand man. You know what I like to liken it to? I don't know if you've ever been in a church or anything like that, but I'll, I'll liken it to the church. How you mm -hmm. have the pastor and he got his right hand man, whatever his title is. Mm -hmm. Right? He's not, he's no way an omega male. He's a beta male. Right? Mm-hmm. So he's, he's not lower, he's just not the alpha. He still has a status. Within the church, he still has a status. Yes. And that's what a beta male looks like. And a lot of women, they do end up with beta males. It's not that they're with males that don't have the power. They do have the power. You get what I'm saying? They do have the power. They just ain't got the alpha power. And a yeah. lot of women are married to beta males, but they're attracted to alphas. Wow, you br <laughs> well, thank you for thank you for breaking that down. So you know, while we still got some time here, I just want to kind of switch gears, and I appreciate you going over that for us because I want to kind of make that clear. Um, um, I wanted to ask you about because I saw a funny video you made about hormonal changes. And the fact that you feel like your the women in your family didn't really prepare you for that, I thought that was a good thing. I wanted you just to tell us about that. I thought it would be something great for the audience to hear about. Yeah. So what I was saying, I can't talk about any other community though about my community of people, right? Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of times when we're raised, a lot of issues are tackled. People don't really prepare us for what's to come as we go through adulthood. And so I had no idea what perimenopause is, right? This is, this is before I started going through all these crazy changes. And I was wondering why I would just cry. I mean, I would listen to a song, a dope song. I'm like, yeah, this is my song. Ah, next day, I'm crying. I'm like, what the hell? Why am I crying? So what I was explaining is that I think that we have to have more conversations in our community about um, perimenopause and different things like that. I don't think that my, the women in my family helped me to do or helped me to understand what would happen to my body when I start, I start going through it. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I think like what tends to happen is our women in our family, they, they sometimes feel like um, you, you'll figure it out. You'll go through it. You'll figure it out. Or maybe sometimes they don't know that they were going through it. But perimenopause is the stage that you go through right before you enter into menopause. Mm -hmm. So it's when the, the estrogen levels and the different hormonal levels start to change within your body. So mm -hmm. when I had went to my doctor and I was having all these weird periods where, I mean, it was crazy. Like my cycle went berserk. And then mm -hmm. next thing you know, I was constantly hot and waking up in my whole sheet would be sweaty and wet, very uncomfortable. 
And I went to the doctor, they ran my levels, and I just saw a small drop of my estrogen. She said, well, you're entering into um, perimenopause. And she explained mm -hmm. to me what it was. And so she was just teaching me the kind of things to cut out my diet to try to balance my, um, my hormonal levels. But, of course, I went to the natural food store, and I got me a whole bunch of regimens to start taking so I can balance myself out. And I started mm -hmm. to take it on a consistent ba basis, and now I still have the hot flashes, which I hate. I hate the hot flashes. Mm. Because the hot flashes are something different. I don't know how old you are if you ever gone through it, but the hot flashes come from the inside of your body and out, and it feels like you're on fire, like you cannot control it. Air conditioner does not make it better for you. Fan does not make it better for you. Ice, I mean, you got to be in front of the freezer with the ice pack on your neck to calm your body down because your temperature rises from the inside out, and then it goes away. Right? So Mrs. Yes. Cole said, yes, Lord, absolutely, right? <laughs> so I just think that, um, I don't care if somebody else is saying, yes, with the sad faces, because this is it's painful. And I just think that, I think that we should be more open with our daughters. We should be more open with the yes and the freezing, absolutely. We should be more open with our daughters and the young women in our lives so that they can know what, what, what they're going to experience. Somebody said personal summers, right? We should be able to do that. So in my household, I try to be as open as possible about as many topics as possible with my children because I don't want them to try to figure out something that they don't have to figure out. Yes. Right? What do you think about dating while being separated? Do you think people should avoid it? Do you think you should wait until divorce? Well, I'm not a religious person. Okay. Right? And I think that people get to decide what they want to do with their own relationships. And I respect it. Mm -hmm. I respect it. Everyone's situation is different. There are, I can only talk about the black community. There are 42 million people in the black community. I cannot tell somebody what to do for their life. Some people never get divorced, but they've been separated for 20 years. I'm supposed to tell them not to date anybody. That's their decision to make. But what I'm do you think a person, person, what would be the reason why a person would allow themselves to be separated, though, but not divorced? Why would you just cut the cord? People have different reasons. People get married for different reasons. Some True. people have access and inheritance. Some people are more concerned about the legacy for their family, what they're leaving behind. There are different reasons. That's true. Right? So I can't, I will never take a blanket statement. And I'm very careful about shaming people because mm -hmm. no, nobody's story is the same. Everyone has their own unique story and their reasons. And people get to where they need to be in their own time. As a therapist, I support them in what they want to do. And I help them to think it out so that they can make the decisions that are right for them. I'm not in a position to shame people. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't shame people. I don't make people feel guilty for what they're going through. I don't know everybody's experience. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, don't, I don't judge people from what I can see on the outside because I'm not in their, their situation. Some people, some people have agreements that you and I don't know about. Some people stay married to people so that they can make sure that when they leave, the person still has health insurance. Some people get separated when they have cancer and they don't have health insurance. And so they stay married so that the person can get their treatment. Who am I to judge that? That's true. Well, I'm just, I'm not really saying judgment, but like at some point, don't you, I mean, if, depending on the situation, aren't you allowing certain things to happen when you don't make it clear what kind of relationship you're in? I mean, and I guess you say you're not a religious person, but as a doctor, I don't know, it's, I know what I want to say, but it's like, well, what about, I guess, morals and standards, like somebody wrote in the comments and I mean, but everybody has their own opinion about it, but... Well, morals, you got to look at the word morals. What does morals mean? You tell me. Morals is intrinsic to the person. Mm -hmm. Meaning it's internal to you. It's your code and how you operate. So who am I to put my morals on somebody else? Look up the word morals. Don't, don't believe me. Go look up the word morals. Read about what morals are. That's an individual decision. Okay, I guess I'm trying to say, like, I mean, why would you stay into something that's not good? 
But who's to say it's not good? Well, okay. everyone's marriage is different. True. Some things are financial. Some things are health reasons. Some things are because of assets. Some people own businesses, houses. I think we come from a narrow mindset, right? Well, no, because people are always saying, well, won't you just be single then? Like, you've heard people say that before. Well, then why, why not just be single? Like, why do people carry, why do people get in marriages to have a single type of, of I, I get what you're saying, because you can always just go back to, well, everybody got their own thing that they're doing. But I guess, when well, maybe it is a religious thing, because People doing their private lives. I mean, that's the world that we in. I mean, if that's not the case, will we have this conversation now? Well, are we talking about people's private lives, or am I having conversations to help people make dating decisions? I mean, we doing both. I mean, people say that, but it's just like people say, well, they want to hear some good, good music, but yet people are constantly consuming all the music and all the shows about violence. So, like, people can say whatever they want out their mouth that they think sounds good, but what do they really consume? So, I mean, you could ask me, well, why, you know, why would we do this? But it's because that's what people like. People yeah, like I that. get it. No, and, and I'm, I'm asking it rhetorically, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm just saying that how would it benefit the individual in their own personal relationship? You asked me, and I gave you my opinion, right? And I said, I don't, I don't, I don't speak on it. It's not my role to speak on it. People okay. get to choose whatever they want to do. And that's my answer to it. I can't sit back here and say, oh, yeah, you should separate because everyone's situation is unique. I don't mm -hmm. know why people are in their relationships and I don't know what it's like for them. I know somebody, I counseled a couple, they were separated for 10, 15 years, but she was in chemo. Mm -hmm. And he kept her on so that she would, would not be without life insurance. I mean, not life insurance, um, health insurance for her treatment. So who am I to say that was wrong? I can't do it. I won't do it. No, I got you. Well, you know, everybody got their own thoughts and opinions. Before we get out of here, is there anything that you would like to say? Anything you got going on? Anything you would like people to check out that you're doing? Well, I would say that I have a women's um a women's relationship coaching group. We we meet every Saturday mm -hmm. at ten o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and people can register by going to theiriswoman.com. The Iris women plural.com and we talk about different topics and we come up with different strategies and people pose their questions and i answer them as a live class and you got to be there to see it right you got to be there to be a part of it because after the class is done they don't have access to the video anymore right unless they buy okay. it so um it's a class that is every saturday morning at 10 o'clock eastern standard time the website is the iris women.com t-h-e-i-r-i-s W O M E N dot com. Every Saturday we meet and we're finishing up our eight week session in two weeks. So this week is strategy number two of what to do when he takes two steps forward and four steps back. Mm -hmm. And next week will be their strategy number three. And then we'll start a new one the following week. So we always have modules with courses where they can follow and they bring their book. Everyone has to bring their relationship coaching book. And I even quiz them. I throw out the quizzes and they answer it and all that stuff. So somebody's asking me about polygamy. Again, I don't have anything against polyg polygamy. But again, it goes back to that conversation we was having at the beginning regarding compatibility. Now, I just happen to be a monogamous person. But it doesn't mean that polygamy is wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? And if, and if I got with somebody and that person was polygamous and I'm monogamous, then it won't, the relationship is not going to be compatible. It's not going to work, work. I'm going to walk away from it. Or they, if they approach me and, and I'm monogamous and they want to be polygamous, it's just not going to work. But I'm not going to yuck somebody else's yum. I don't consume myself with that kind of stuff. I'm just here to help people to relate to people better. I'm here to help people find the words to have a conversation. I'm not here to tell people what to do, what not to do. It, given the situation, polygamy can work for some people. And a lot of people are in polygamy de facto anyway. And what I mean by that is you think your boo is yours, but you know he got other people out there and he got a baby that he had in your relationship. You in a polygamous relationship anyway. But you trying to change that person. Maybe you got to be strong enough to walk away if you don't want it. But I'm not going to yuck somebody else's yum. That's their business. I'm strong enough in my position not to criticize somebody in theirs. Well, okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I want to say that 
I guess I'm, you know, and that's how you feel. Yesterday we had a psychologist on, and one thing I found interesting is that, you know, when you're trying to go out there and you're shopping for a therapist, you got to find the one that is right for you. So, you know, you have your philosophies. Like for me, I would go to a therapist that was more religious, and that's just something that I would want to do because, you know, I don't think everything should float everybody's boat. But I get the perspective you're from, and that's why I want to bring you on. And in this conversation, we don't have to agree. That's what Care Dangerous Talk is about. So, that's right. So, you know, I enjoyed you as a guest. I just want to make that clear to everybody. This is not a show where, you know, everybody that I have on, we're going to agree. I mean, because that's not going to happen, and I don't want it to be that kind of show. I mean, it should I'm be all, that kind of show. Well, you know, it's Care Dangerous oh, Talk. And group well, yeah. thinking is toxic. Well, hey, you know, so I'm saying the the reason I made this show is to have these tough conversations. You know, you came on, you, you told me how you feel about things, and I appreciate that. So, you guys, thank you so much. Make sure you go and subscribe and follow to Care Dangerous Talk on all the platforms, YouTube. Follow me on this station. Follow me on Spotify, Anchor, all that. Thank you so much. Continue to love. Thank you for doing what you do. And I'll holler at y'all next week on the show. Peace, Peace. and blessings. Uh, yes.